Hi, Nathan. Hey, how's it going? It's going well. Hey, Dave. Hey. I'm actually going to leave video off for a couple of minutes, okay? Oh, yeah, of course. You all set for today, Nathan? Yeah, um, I think I just need um, permission for uh, screen sharing. Okay, let me see. Oh, I'm surprised. I was trying to make you a host of um, this meeting, but let me see if I can't do that. Yeah, I'm on my phone. Okay. Hmm. Um... And um, meeting settings. Show name, show. Hmm. Um, boy, I thought I was, I thought I did a good job of making sure that I got that in the Zoom meeting settings for this one. Yeah, they seem to like to put two different buttons for everything. <laughs> yeah, let me see what I can do here. Sure. Uh, still now. Oh, interesting. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, hmm. Interesting. Uh, all right, back to meeting. Uh, where am I? Back to meeting. Okay. Uh, there's got to be a way. This is my first time, yeah, on a phone trying to do this. Oh, yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a hassle. Yeah, mm, man. <laughs> Let's see, if anybody has insight, um, they or yeah, whoever might be there. Uh, you know who's always good for these things? Uh, Dan Good is always good for these things. Uh, it's like fixes these uh, last-minute technical issues. What's going on? Trying to. I'm just trying to give Nathan. The ability to share his screen. I knew I'd be traveling, so I thought I had made I made sure that I wouldn't need to be in this meeting uh, in right. case I wasn't able to attend, um, and also that uh, that everybody could do everything without me, including sharing screen. So I thought everybody had that that ability. And, and if you tap if you tap on Nathan on the screen, you can't. There's no option to like make him host or something. Ooh. I'm shooting in the dark here. I don't. I really don't know. But no, yeah, I know, that, I know that to share a screen, you have to be made host. I do. I know that much. Could I? Yeah. Let me see if I can. All right, there you are. Ah. Um. Allow put room. I can remove you. Uh, mute. Stop <laughs> video. Chat. Spotlight video. Make host. Make host. That's what we're looking for. All right. There you go. You're host now. We are. All right. Now, with great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, thanks, Dave. That was, yeah, that, that put, sure. put, put, put me in the right I'm direction. I'm glad that worked. I did, and yeah. just for the record, I was not the like the AV kid in grade school. I did, I did not help with the. Well, yeah, sometimes just outside perspectives are invaluable. So. <laughs> That's right. Um, it's 8.04. I don't, uh, there was a bunch of people that RSVP'd for this. We can wait a little bit, um, if we'd like uh, to. Yeah, let's or if see. We, we can let, or, let Nathan decide. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just wait one more minute and I'm going to get, um, better PDF anyway. And I'm, I'm just going to turn off video and listen for the most sure. part. Sure. But I'm around. Okay. <laughs> Cool. So yeah, and I guess um, since we're saying what we're doing, <laughs> I'm I'm, uh, I'm traveling. I've got family in the other room, and I may need to drop off uh, earlier. It's eight okay. o'clock here in Florida, so um, yeah. So, but I definitely want to see at least the first part of this. Sure. I was also yeah. wondering. Oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. I was gonna say it's gonna be pretty simple, but yeah, go ahead. Uh, the other thing was um, thinking about the next meeting. We we decided that we were going to do a field trip 
to the good mod and see all their machines. Um, and I don't know how best to do logistics and about that. Like, does everybody just get themselves there? And then setting up the schedule, like uh, what time would work best for everybody who wants to go to that? So yeah. it's sort of like, um, like uh, people will RSVP, but then there's maybe, I mean, I guess just like show up here at this time and leave it to people. But then additionally, I want to make sure that, yeah, it's, it's a time where everybody can come who wants to come. Um, yeah, do you want to just, I guess, we, do we need to set that up with them first? It's already set up. Uh, okay. Spencer's a good a friend, friend of mine. And he's excited to, to um, yeah, to show. I think actually I have the date already. Okay. I think but I we can that. always move it around. Uh, he just sort of threw it out there because I gave him the, um, yeah. Well, I made the date actually. It's the first Thursday of every month. So, <laughs> but if that's not, if that doesn't work for a field trip, then maybe we can look at something else. Well, um, let's just keep that. Maybe we can start a, a chat in on a meetup on if anybody wants to do carpooling or any coordination cool. like that. Cool. Yeah, that yeah I guess that'll, that'll be good. All right, cool. Um, yeah, I guess let's get, get rolling. Yeah, yeah, I'm ready. All right. I can't wait. Um, so I want to just do a presentation. It's kind of the... Uh, it's like what I did on my summer vacation, except it's uh, what I did during COVID um, with just bringing Python into Grasshopper. Um, I'm gonna share screen now. So I put a PDF together and it's in the chat. There's links to it in the, um, the meetup chat. So all these are hot links, so they'll take you to websites. Um, so basically I just working on Grasshopper and started reading forums and people like, oh, using Python for this. And at first it was pretty intimidating because I'm coming from zero coding. Um, and then I started learning a little Python in its own environment and then got some stuff to work. And then pretty soon I was like, oh, I hit a wall because I don't even understand what these error messages are. Um, I took some courses and it kind of got me up to speed. So I just wanted to share some of like my journey of learning stuff and some of the, the simple stuff that I found that was kind of giving me hangups before um, awesome. and how to work with it. So if we've got, I see there's a lot of new faces or a lot of new names. So that's awesome. Welcome everybody. Um, this kind of the simplest coolest thing to start with i found this python turtle which is like the uh the old logos program that you do on apple IIe's, uh make your lego motors go around so it basically is just a cursor on a screen and it um it's a program that uses the python language to do a bunch of geometric transformations which is the perfect analogy for what we do in Grasshopper is it's so often just geometric transformations. Um, so I bought, put this uh, Python turtle link here um, and it's, you know, you'll, it'll take you an hour uh, if people are coming from absolutely no background at all. Um, and then I've got a link to the PyCharm, which is an API interface. So that's kind of what you can start working with Python on your computer and it will uh, basically make your text colors for whatever you're doing and it helps kind of edit text more easily. Um, I don't use that in Rhino or Grasshopper. This is just Python on its own terms. And then this book, um, one of the O'Reilly series was great. Um, there's a link to all these on the, the PDF. Uh, and this will teach you the basic data structures with lists and tuples and sets um, and dictionaries, a lot of the kind of basic organizational things. And I found it really helpful when I started working with Grasshopper to have gone through that book beforehand. Um, a lot of simple exercises and it helps you just kind of recognize what a problem looks like. And when things aren't looking right in Grasshopper, it helps you kind of be like, oh, I'm trying to 
trying to get these numbers to arrange in such and such a way. Um, so I highly recommend going through that book if you've got no Python uh, experience. Um, then I did a bunch of just online courses. Um, the first two here, um, these are both from the Rhino 3D education website. The first two are free. And then the bottom one, I think was like $29. Um, and it was really good. Um, she, in th these two uh, GH Python courses, she shows you really useful abstract things, um, but she's also really good at showing you common mistakes and like deliberately doing a wrong thing and then undoing it because it's a kind of, I don't know, it helps, um, it helps you understand what errors you might be making. Um, and then at the bottom here, I've got a couple of uh, just resources for, for looking up deeper code. Um, let's see. So what I thought I'd do first is, um, let's go into Grasshopper now. Um, so in a little bit, we'll go through making this fun little disco ball, which is basically all the skills I learned in that last tutorial, I put them into one script and kind of tried them out and used some of the, the resources and learning skills as well. Um, but first things first, I um, thought we'd just look at the, the Python interface in Grasshopper. So uh, you're in your workspace, type in Python, Oops. And I don't know how many people are already using this or if this is new for people, but um, double click and then it turns into this API to start interfacing and typing your code in. So when I first started this, I had a basic mathematical problem. Um, and I, I use these a lot when I want, want to do something a little bit more complex with math and I want more than one output. Um, but I started getting all of these syntax errors and then I realized if you right click here, um, this has got different uh, kind of filters for bringing data into your code. So you've got this item access, which might be your geometry or your numbers, and then list access. Um, and then you can do tree uh, access, which gets into some deeper stuff. Um, very often, if something, if your code is working, but you're getting an error in Grasshopper, it's either, it should be set to list access when it's not, or if you go down to type hint, you need to make sure there's a match with what you're bringing into Grasshopper and what you're trying to do with it. So uh, if it's looking for a number and you're giving it a circle, uh, it doesn't know what to do with that. So a lot of the, the most common are going to be your your integers and float numbers. So uh, a float is going to be like 22 divided by seven, and it's going to be dot number number number, and then integer is just a, a single value. Um, but you're also able to change different types of geometry that you're bringing in from Grasshopper. So essentially not being familiar with these things was my biggest hang up when I was just trying to go straight from Python into Grasshopper. Um, so I wanted to show a couple of examples of that. So I created just this series um, with the series operator in Grasshopper. And then we've got our Python uh, unit here. You can go, you right click on these and you change X to and whenever you change the inputs or the outputs, it talks to the code in Python. Um, so I'm going to change this back to X, which is the default. Um, and you can see you've got this out. Um, I never ever delete the out. Uh, it's basically what uh, what the Python code is is seeing. So if you hit um, print, which is probably one of the most important rudimentary commands in any language, we do print x um, and test it. It brings in this uh, set of numbers that we have here. And then you can see it's actually grafted them up. 
and it's also turned them into uh, float numbers um, by default. And then we can change this into integers. And then you can see it drops all the decimal points. So depending on the code you're working on, that might be a crucial element. Um, let's see. And then if we change this to list access, again, the data structure is now a set of numbers. Um, so you might get you know, a false positive if you're bringing in data the wrong way. So it's important to make sure you're intentional about what you're trying to do with those things. Uh, Nathan, uh, when you when you set it to list access, could you do that again? Yeah. It looked looked like it just concatenated all the numbers together into one item. Yeah. Rather than what I would have expected. Is there a way to also, yeah, flatten the list? Or I guess we could just flatten the output, but yeah, I think <laughs> let me. Or if so, it's not immediately, yeah, obvious, we don't have to, you know, waste too much time on it. Sure. Um, yeah, this is one of the um, arguments, or not an argument, I forget my terminology, but you can say, if you're not, I don't know, if you print, it's going to go in this out, but most of the time, you're just setting um, an output variable. So I've got A, is this A output? And then I'm saying display convert that to a list and that this is um i mean i mean that's the output that you're getting yeah that you're getting out of a is i guess what i'm sort of looking for out of out but yeah obviously it's not really even all that necessary of a problem to chase down right but neat yeah um yeah um, sometimes I, it is <laughs> yeah okay uh and, and i guess i also wanted to ask another question about the console or like if you get an error message doesn't does out set shoot? Oh, it doesn't look like it does. Yeah, um, sort of report that out um, to the panel. Yeah, it actually, it does. I'm actually surprised it's not doing, let's just actually say, if I, uh, let's, let's just do B, which isn't anything. So then you've got, oh, perfect. Yep, so that spits Great. it out. Yeah. Awesome. Um, cool. Thanks. So let's, um, yeah, so that's, you need to keep the out here. Sometimes it's, I'll build up a bunch of stuff or I'll like, sometimes you write a line of code and you want to analyze it. So I'll just put something in there and then I'll, I want to look at it and I'll, I'll, I'll stick um, one of these here to just read what it is. Um, then you can just delete it. But uh, I always keep that out there because that's your data feed. Um, so all, all the code, all that was just looking at X on its own terms here. Um, you may have seen above that we had import uh, Rhino syntax as RS. Um, and that is basically one of the ways that we're gonna merge Rhino commands with Python coding language. Because when Python was created, they had no under, you know, need to talk to Rhino. So this is a, what's known as a library. Um, and basically you need to import these things and you just type this in and the Grasshopper interface knows how to bring it in. You don't have to do anything deeper in your systems folder. Um, and then you can start typing other codes with within Rhino. So we do rs dot, and then what, um, it's basically saying use RS as a shortcut for Rhino script syntax. And then if you type that shortcut dot, it starts giving you a bunch of parameters. Um, so if we wanna add a circle, and then if you do open parentheses, down at the bottom, it starts giving you instructions of, let's see if I can, Sorry, I'm a little bit, I'm as zoomed in as I can get here, but <laughs> um, it starts giving you instructions on how to, to work with that and the kind of inputs it's gonna be looking for. Um, so this wants a plane or central point and a radius. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna say Y and then I'll say eight and then close that. 
and we'll get an error message here. And that's because Y is um, the point that it wants to start the circle and we've given it no data, but we have a Y here that's open. So I'm gonna hit okay to close that. I'm gonna right click this item access, type hint 0.3D. And then we just go add a point here and then set a point in space here. Um, there's our point. Um, and if we wanna look at this circle, I'll just do, I'm gonna call it A. So we'll say A equals that. And then, yeah, now we've got a circle. So if we wanna set that to change the diameter, we can, instead of eight, we can make this, uh, let's go, the radius, we'll make, we'll call that R. It's gonna uh, give us an error again. So we have no parameter that's R. So I'll add this, need to change the name to R. And then let's do, let's see. This number and then make sure it's float. And then you can change that. So that's basically the most rudimentary way to work with it. So I showed you this Rhino script syntax. There are several different libraries. Um, Rhino script syntax is actually skipping Grasshopper. Um, it's just working on Rhino's own terms. We can bring in Grasshopper script syntax and work with modules from Grasshopper. Um, sometimes some are easier to use than others. So I'll just kind of go back and forth. Um, so I thought I'd show you guys that little disco ball that I made. Um, and in the comments, the whole code is attached. So if you wanna open that up and follow along, it does require having Lunchbox plugin, but I think that's probably the first plugin anyone gets. So I assume most people have that. Um, so let's just walk through what this code is. Um, there's a trigger on it and it allows um, the code to be gone through line by line um, as a cycle. So you just hit play and you get it to, to spin. Um, so that's in Grasshopper if you just type in trigger and then you just connect it right into the it's kind of unlike other things, you just drag this and just touch it and it'll snap in. Um, so yeah, if, uh, if people want to, I think I've, I'll just walk through this code a little bit and show you guys kind of what it's, what it's doing. Um, let's, let's start in the inputs first. So you've got um, a run, which is just a Boolean toggle. So, um, and this reset. So if I have this going, uh, it's off now, so we just turn that on. I've got this reset. Um, it just kind of sets it back to zero. Um, N is the number of subdivisions, so we can get this into uh, much more finely tuned geometry. The reason I have it set at 10 is that this is really processor intensive and it runs really slow. So I like to have it at a low number. Um, and then this affects the color. So it, I can, you can just kind of shift it. Um, and then this point is basically the middle of this orb. So these are all the sort of exterior inputs that we have control over. And then we'll find them again in the Python script here. So are you guys able to read this from your screens at all? I'm able to. Okay. Yeah, um, I can't really. Maybe if I get some magnifiers. <laughs> well, I guess I'll, um, you know what we can do? I'll, I've got it on the presentation. Let's do it this way. Um, so the beginning of that code um, you see this green text I've got with a, a hash mark. That means any text that follows that on a line of code is not gonna be entered into the function. It's just there for taking notes and giving directions. So 
uh, first step is like this import libraries. Um, so we went through that Rhino script syntax. Um, I, br I always bring math in. Um, you can do more than your basic operators when you bring math in. And then you've got the GH Python lib, which is basically grasshopper components. Um, and then Rhino geometry, um, it's got a few more features and the math. So the first thing I showed you was that trigger and it lets you cycle through and it kind of creates that animation effect. Um, so that's a while loop, which uh, is pretty common programming um, term. So basically it's saying if uh, there's zero um, in this, in a set, called globals um, or set this number, this Q to zero, which doesn't exist anywhere. And then keep adding to it. Um, and then it's got this break line. Um, sorry, this is probably pretty vague, but the important thing is if you're doing a while loop, it's basically saying always do something unless some other condition is met. And if you don't have that break line in there, uh, you will just crash the computer. So that's that's a tripping hazard, um, but that's basically for the animation. It's not too important for making this geometry. So forgive, real yeah. quick, because I know I know you didn't want to talk about it, but I'm I actually am sort of interested in the break line. Like if it can't satisfy the condition, then it'll just or or I mean it'll run through. I yeah I, I guess that's sort of the thing because it seems like it makes sense. And then you just sort of close the logic. It doesn't. I'm sort of wondering if the break wasn't there. Yeah. Um, what What does happen? How does it? Yeah, how does it? Um, to the next line of code. It just adds. So. Where is the value of run set? Um, that is one of these inputs. So, that's true here or false here. Oh, uh, one of those toggles. Okay. Yep. Exactly. Oh, so 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 to it. that end, uh, similarly, like with uh, when you're doing just Python, you would declare, you know, all the objects that you're or things that you're going to interact with at the top, and then interact with them. And in a sense, you're doing that here on the uh, left side of the component. Precisely. And so you don't, yeah, and you don't have to do it in the code. That's that's kind of nice. Yeah. Little, so right. nice. sometimes you just I don't know. You might want it tidy and just put it all in there. But a lot of times, because you're interfacing with Grasshopper, this might be some variable that's affected by something upstream as well. Mm -hmm. um, so. so um, yeah. And then the yeah the break thing yeah I was sort of. Uh, so if if this if it's true, uh, it runs. It adds one. It adds one until yep. it's not true. Um, so the break just sends it back up to the top. Is that what it's doing? No, it actually, it stops this while loop and actually allows it to go to the next line. Okay. So here's, if we took off the break, it's it would just, just do the do loop. Q plus one, Q plus two, Q plus, it'll just keep adding and it won't I, know to go to the next line of code. I see, um, I see. Okay, now yeah. that makes complete sense. Yeah, it it's makes like- it So it can't get out of that first command. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it still has more work to do, you know, like keep going. Yeah. And then yeah. go back up. Exactly. Okay, that that makes complete sense. Let me show you. Um, I'm gonna let's see, reset this. If we bring a panel over to this radians. It's at zero now. Um, let's see. So right now it's not moving and I've got this here. Once we set this to go, it just starts building numbers. So that just keeps going on and on and on. So if we didn't have that break, it would just be building, it'd just be counting and it wouldn't be running through the rest of the code that builds those numbers up. So um, let me get back to this presentation mode here. Um, so that's the animation part of it. Um, and I just set the radius at 100. That's that's a kind of thing you could definitely put as an input as well. Um, and then I did this little math operation for radians. 
because I just want to basically get this into degrees or radians to make a circle. Um, so these last lines of code, they just describe a circle based on our locus center point that was one of those inputs from the left side. Um, and as it cycles through, it's building up this circle. So I put the output here in yellow and that's just the X, Y, Z coordinates of each one of these. So it's, it's basically following um, cosine of I and sine of I. So this, um, I'm not sure if you guys can see that X equals uh, the square brackets. This is a for loop, which this is probably a bad example because like the doesn't say four. <laughs> um, so usually with a for loop, it's it lets you iterate through things. So if you're not familiar with this, that's one of the main things you want to be doing with Python is just iterating through a set of numbers and do an operation on it progressively, which is one one of the things that's harder to do in Python unless you're using like or Grasshopper unless you're using like Hoop Snake or something like that. Um, but if you, yeah, if you start learning any Python, this is probably the first thing you're going to do. Um, that second course I was pointing out on the resources list showed you can just, you can set a variable and then in square brackets and then just say for I in, um, which is like reduces three lines of code into one, which once, once I got hip to that, I was pretty excited about it. Um, let's see. So then... I've got this thing called a jumper, which basically um, it just moves through that circle. And then now we're getting into a pretty straightforward kind of a grasshopper function where I have created a surface um, that's bigger than the little dot circles. Um, bring in the lunch bat box. Um, and this is a gh dot lunch box. So that's from the grasshopper um, syntax library. So that just triangulates that surface into triangular panels. And you can see we've got in um, parentheses here, there's the surf and then NN. These are all things that um, it kind of tells you how to work with it and you can set the different variables. So the NN is just the UV divisions. And if you remember um, here, I've got N as an input and that's the 12. So that's how we're changing the scale of the subdivisions. N is just um, the UV divisions in the lunchbox tool. Um, so from there, I found the center point of each one of those uh, facets. And then I said, I've got that circle that we first started with and it cycles through it. And all it does is each point in that circle, it measures the distance from that interior point to all of the center points of the other facets. And it measures, it creates a line and then just measures that distance for each line. Um, and for each line length, it assigns a value to the, um, the panel so that's this shrink line here. And then you can see it just basically decreases um, the size of each one of those triangles based on its distance from that one point. And that's what's cycling through. Um, let's see, so it just redraws that at a different scale. And I've set the center point as the locus of the scaling for each one of those. Um, did did you also is there a plane that you had to describe or is um, it just i just locally? used yeah but i just used the the geometry itself and just referenced itself okay oh, for the scalar okay. yep yeah i um, wonder that works with triangles but that might not work for anything that's doubly curved i wonder or i wonder it, if it, uh i can tell you it won't <laughs> because yeah. i tried yeah. that okay <laughs> yeah you'd have to uh, yeah, shoot it like you would in Grasshopper, but okay, yeah. cool, cool. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, and then let's see, it looks like actually my bad, my code didn't make it 
Oh, I, I updated this code elsewhere. I can I can fix this for you guys later. But um, the color changing, you can just output um, RGB values. And I made the RGB value a function of the scale. And you can just remap that. to So 255 to 0 is your, or 1 is your uh, RGB values. I guess it's 0. Um, and basically, as each triangle enlarges um, or shrinks, the color will change because it's just changing the RGB value based on its own size. Um, so I think that's that. So you can see I've got the color here, and that just goes into this preview. Um, but if we want to look at that in panel view, you'll see you just generate this list of values. Um, and those are constantly changing. Um, let me turn this jumper on. So now you can see this one node and that's driving everything. It, as that moves, it just gets closer and further away from all those panels. Um, so I've got a couple of other pretty rudimentary projects. If you guys want, I can just kind of walk you through what I was doing with those. Um, let's see. Oh, you know what, they're in different. I had a real quick question uh, yeah. about the math, uh, your reference for math. Um, do you use, like, I always go to Wolfram Math World, but, or do you have another trusted and true reference? Um, I don't, honestly, I Google search, but Wolfram Math World comes up a lot. So, but okay. I don't have a yeah, go-to. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, Let's see. So here's like a pretty basic Bornoi pattern. Um, so this is probably the first time I ever used Python was I just went on the forum and somebody had this and they just tried it out. Um, but it shows something kind of crucial, which is I recreated this Voronoi where everything scaled and you can see there's this terrible little bit that got dropped off. So if you change the scale of these, these are supposed to all reduce uniformly. And when you get very small edges, this problem in Grasshopper where stuff just gets deleted or you get this like little artifact. Um, and someone in the forum was just like, hey, if you just use Rhino syntax and bring it in through Python, it just won't do that. It behaves correctly. Um, so I, th I think this might be more of a Python bug. Um, so I'm gonna turn that off. And then, so this guy's code is dead simple. You just bring in Rhino syntax, set the eight output, um, and that you, you're basically doing offset curve as you would do in Rhino without Grasshopper. Um, and then you set these uh, variables. So the curve that you're addressing, the direction and the distance. So I've got those plugged in elsewhere in the model, but um, we turn it on. It works flawlessly and it gets to all different scales. So it doesn't do whatever that bug that it does in Grasshopper. So sometimes one of the things you can do if you're having a problem with Grasshopper not doing what you expect it to do is just use the Rhino syntax and kind of pretend it's not there, but you still need to do some variables in Grasshopper. It kind of returns some of the functionality. You're, you've made me realize that We've been coding this whole time in the command line. I mean, obviously, yep. and that when we use that, uh, when we're calling for uh, what we're doing here, uh, offsetting the 
inside uh, that we can also round, like decide what the corners are going to be and all the other variables uh, we have access to in the same way that, yeah, we would just enter it into the command line. That's pretty neat. I, I, Actually, let's look at that a little bit more closely. So here's another thing. So um, I don't know if anyone was here. I gave a presentation on just kind of the stuff I do for work, which making these acoustic baffles and um, material size limits are a major factor because I, I get drawings from clients that are like okay i want this line to be a baffle and it's like okay it's 75 feet long we're gonna have to chop that into bits um so just for getting estimates i need to know how many of different lines are and if they just kind of bracket into different lengths so let me make recreate this uh got too many windows open let's see i'm afraid to close this Wrong one. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, if I make a line that's nine feet long here, And I'm going to trim these so they're all different lengths. Um, let's see. It's kind of three ways to do this. So I don't want to measure all of these by hand if I've got a thousand of these. So the grasshopper script, I'm going to just set all of these. And then I've got basically this question, how many of each line length? And then this is a grasshopper script and it basically counts, I guess I've got, actually I'm a little bit worried about this. Uh, oh, it is correct. They're still too small. There we go. Um, so this grasshopper script basically assesses the length of each one of these lines and compares it to another number. And it just tells me how, are they under five feet or if these whole foot increments? Um, so this is, the grasshopper definition for that. Um, made another one with a kind of complex output, just this is a bit clunky, but in Python, it's still a lot neater than doing it in grasshopper. Um, and basically I've created a bunch of these empty sets and then it iterates through all of the, the lines that you put in and it's like, hey, is it less than 60 inches? If it is, add it to the short pile and if it's closer to six feet, put it in the six foot, or if it's closer to seven, put it in the eight foot and so on. Um, so just using Python, here's an example that you've just got a much tighter script. Um, however, I think Jacob, this kind of gets to what you're talking about, we're always entering code in the command line. We can also just run Python without running any grasshopper. So you've got, um, let's see. Type in edit Python script. You can just start coding things um, in Python and you bring in your Rhino script syntax library and just start, start making things. Um, and then if you wanna run it, it's simply run Python script. Uh, let's see.
Okay, so I've um, just run it and you can see it says select lines, select them, hit space bar, and then directly in the command line, I've got a measurement of all of those things that I was looking at before. So um, that's really handy. I know a lot of us have talked about the frustration of getting people to use Grasshopper with your coworkers. So this is one I used just the other day where I just called up a coworker. I work remotely. So I was just like, open this file, type in run Python script, double click this, select things. And then what it spits out up here, just copy and paste that and you're done. So. That's nice. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll solve all your problems. Just open this file. Yep. <laughs> so it's um, a lot less intimidating for, for other people. To package it and actually make it a button, there's no simple way to do that, is there? Or even just um, a function? There is a way to do it that I don't know how to do. There's mm -hmm. definitely like graphic user interface tools in Grasshopper. Um, and I th think you could probably bring it into your menu here. Um, yeah. That is want... outside of my skill set. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I'm just uh, you thinking about you mentioned your coworker, and it's like, well, coworkers and all their computers. I remember our, our um, technology BIM manager at at Bora. Uh, you know, he had scripts that would run things and load things up and, and make it easily deployable. And, and I think the, uh, yeah, the deployability to make sure that everybody has this button on their uh, access to this button, other than easy access, other than having to go hunt for it on the server. But, but yeah, you can always cluster stuff up and make user objects. Those are always pretty and simple. Yeah, I just... <laughs> I always get uh, intimidated by having 15 inputs on those. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then you get lost inside them. You know, you forget what they do and you got clusters and clusters and clusters. Yeah, yeah, I, I find, yeah, it creates a different problem. Um, yeah. So. I, and also just to point out, just, I don't know, the miracle of tagging and and labeling those things. Like what a, what a tedious and, and, I don't know, thankless task in a sense to when you're trying to make a tag, either, you know, whether it's going to be something laser cut actually, or, or just for your own references or ex exported to an Excel, file, like concatenating and inserting, you know, characters and breaking text and just having to manage text is such a nightmare, but Python, and it just looks bad. Uh, yeah. Python makes it look, it's probably Python's a much better way to do that. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's a good point too. Where just because you're going to put some do Python, like there's no reason to do everything in your Grasshopper in one giant Python too. It, you can just separate into like Python's doing this here and it's doing that over there, um, and it does tidy things up. Um, also, with sharing with coworkers, it, <laughs> it helps keep people from messing stuff up as well too, because it it's kind of a don't go zone. So unless you, you know what you're doing. So that's nice for that. Um, yeah. Anybody have any other questions? I think we're getting close to the hour mark. Went pretty fast. I was just going to agree with you about the, uh, the utility of making a, a bunch of small functions as opposed to one giant one, you know, that's generally a best practice in, in so many, you know, areas keep keep it kind of granular for all the reasons you said it's easier to update and it's easier to uh it's, it's more resilient in the face of you know other people and etc i wonder if there is a a uh i don't know a limit or a recommendation for how many inputs and how many outputs you should have to any one component or you know discrete function in something like the python or grasshopper like five to one five to five three to one or mm. Mm. Mommy oh. said, let's make an apple pie for granny naughty is a big help she cuts up the apples and puts them in the bowl but keeps trying to... uh i didn't understand for bowl yeah Mommy i did not and naughty visit the farm C is for cat, 
the animals are very friendly. Hmm. Sounds like. Is hello. To... Hello. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh. Huh? <laughs> All right. Moving on. Yeah. 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 I, yeah it'd be. Yeah. Fifteen inputs. You know, and one output. I don't know. I could see how that could make sense. And then thinking about all those ladybug components, those things are crazy. Yeah, uh, I haven't worked with that much. Um, is that yeah. that's weather analysis stuff? Yeah, and it's all built on uh, Python. In fact, okay. uh, was meant to be as a pedagogical tool for yeah for teaching Python. So um, okay, cool. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Uh. Python APIs like accessing, like reaching out to other things. Had you gotten into any of that? Um, no, I don't. I, I, what um, what kind of examples are you thinking of? Well, I, I guess I'm just thinking of uh, bringing in functions that or libraries uh, that allow you to access uh, Google Chrome and start executing commands online and taking you to addresses or or building websites you know where like maybe it's hosting some data or visualizing okay. some data like uh, you could like export an svg to the cloud or something and open it in chrome but thinking about stringing together like functions that are beyond grasshopper spidering out into the rest of your computer yeah that would be interesting or input so you could have weather data <laughs> weather data <laughs> yeah 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 that would be really cool or yeah yeah sun locations and azimuth yeah totally that'd be neat <laughs> i can imagine if you like come back in an hour and notice that this has changed <laughs> uh-huh yeah <laughs> Hey, Nate, I, I tried uh, clicking on the link in the comments and it wanted a password when it sent me to your site. But is that just because I wasn't logged into Meetup at the time? That is, I thought I took that off actually. Um, see if I can change that from here. So you went to nathanrader.com assets. Uh, or, or yeah, I just took the link. You know, I didn't try ever typing it in. Maybe I should. Um, assets, is that it? Or it's download, sorry. So it's uh, forward slash downloads. There it is. Okay, it worked. Cool. Yep. It's um. Thanks. Yeah, I just wanted that PDF in particular. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I set it up so you can't like just click to it without through through the website. It's kind of in the the gray zone on Squarespace. So. Right. <laughs> do you do you want to um, or if you haven't already, would you mind posting that link on the uh, this event page in the comments or even uh, in yep, the it, group? It's there. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Oh, um, thank you. No problem. Yeah. Um, yeah. The first one is the PDF and that, yeah, it's the, well, it's the, there's the PDF and then there's the grasshopper definition for that disco ball. Um, awesome. Yeah. Cool. From my part, I was just like, thank you. It's for me. I'm a competition designer. I actually started like doing C sharp and I'm really afraid to say that I like it. Because I'm a really, really beginner, it's really strong word to say like I like something, but for like this hour, it was like just catching up with Python. It was awesome. So thank you. I don't oh, have any. Good to have you. Now. <laughs> um, yeah, I really appreciate you taking the time and putting this stuff together. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. Um, what uh, how did you get started with C sharp or this? I guess I saw people using Python, so I just kind of chose it because I saw a lot of people on the forums, but I know a lot of people are working in C-sharp as well. Um, how did you get started with that? 
no, actually, we started with Python. I'm doing master's in computational design now. Okay. And we started with Python in, in Spider, actually, and then we did it in Iron Python and then Rust, uh, G, GH Python. But I'm like not awesome in anything, it's just like introduction at all. And then we got like had an elective on C Sharp, and then I liked it because I don't think that Python we can do plugins with in Visual Studios. I'm not sure about that. So it's yeah, it it would be uh, you would be uh, giving people user objects in the Python. Uh, that that's how those people do um, offer extensions and plugins uh, extensions to Grasshopper, but they'll be user objects rather than libraries. Ah, okay. I didn't try it, but like it was awesome to just like do your little component that does like multiplication or plus, but still you did that. But I didn't even try it with Python because I'm just like getting to know around. But anyways, that, that was like really good catch up. And mm -hmm. I'm in Germany, it's 2 a.m. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, thanks for coming. <laughs> no, thank wow. you. Yeah, have a good night then. <laughs> you too. Sleep well. Yeah, thank you. All right. Well, cool. You nailed it. Not, yeah, you, right on the dot. I mean, we got four minutes to, yeah, stretch. Yeah. <laughs> All so right. You went down to Is, um, to avoid the heat? Oh, man. Uh, yeah, I've been seeing the news. It looks terrible. Uh, it got to be 116, I heard. Yep. Roads are buckling under the heat and pressure. <laughs> Yeah, I saw that on NPR. I haven't seen any of these roads. <laughs> okay, it's like one, and it was yeah, already uh, sort of yeah cracked up. But but yeah, going to be back there soon, and hopefully it will uh, yeah we'll be cooled off by then. Uh, yeah, it's it's fine now. So yeah, yeah, that's good to hear. Cool. All right. Well, thanks everybody. Well, thanks. For yeah, thanks everybody. Yeah. Um, and let's All just right. um, follow up for the field trip. Um, just if there's any coordination. Yeah. On it. Yeah. Thinking just uh, going to send out the invite. People will RSVP. And as they RSVP, they'll be invited to a doodle poll. And then we'll just nail it down that way, maybe. Okay. And, and this uh, is but, the, it's by Powell's. And like every so day. So they do, have. Yeah, they have two locations. One of them is uh, on top of Everyday Music, previously known. Um, and that's more their showroom. They do okay. do fabrication in the back, but it's clean work, upholstery, and like finishing work. Uh, then they have another place that's US 30, down US 30, yep. a, in a more industrial area. And there is that's where they're... Well, they have a CNC router in the other place. They may have moved it, or maybe they have two, but more dirty work happens out there. And out there, they have the clay printer, and that's what I want to play with or want to take a look so at that's and see. Going. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 We okay. could, or if there's interest in seeing both, maybe, but that takes more time and logistics. But yeah, that one would be, I think, most interesting to see. Yeah, that sounds cool. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. All right. Look for that, awesome. everybody. All right. All right. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye.